folks. You know what time it is? That's right. It's the about no round old period. Good or bad or old or new. Sip away the night with all our birds. Well, you folks that are ready late. It's your theory, you fear again. So grab a brew and join us when you can. It will rate our drink based on what we think. It has opinions on you. Well, it's not just booze, some hot sauce too. Basically, there's nothing we won't do. So join us every single week, my friend. Just sit right back, you'll fit right in. Welcome all your posts and all your thoughts. Hey, macro, macro, we don't care. We do it all those summer days. Call us crazy normals, but we're not. Yeah, call us crazy normals, but we're not. You can call us crazy normals, but we're not. Guys, we're here in Erie, Ontario, going to Bayside Brewing. I figured, you know, not meet the guys out on the pier. Great place to have a beer. Look at this. Long, 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 long. Cheers. Long, long, long. Cheers. Good day, everybody. We're here in Erio. Do I? Yeah. yeah okay. That's it. And uh, yeah, we're here at Bayside Brewing. So we have Dallas, we have Colin. What are we going to look at today? Hey, welcome. Yeah, thanks for yeah. coming out. We appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers. Yeah. So yeah, we're in uh, Erio, Ontario, Canada, which is uh, just kind of south of Chatham, Kent, or the city of Chatham in Chatham, Kent. Um, it's a little beach community um, just on the shore of Lake Erie. And we actually opened up a, a new brewery here. Uh, in July of two, or 2012, I guess. Um, so we've recently just doubled up our production and uh, we got some new things coming out. So we'll uh, take you in the back if you want to check out some beer and we can kind of run through the, the history of, of Bayside and, and how we started. Alrighty, so let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, come on back. This is our production floor in the brewery. And we, uh, we actually started out with five 1,000 liter vats that we were able to, uh, to find, luckily. And um, within the first six months of just being so busy and just popular demand for craft beer in the region, we, uh, we doubled capacity. We had another 5,000 liter set of vats uh, to our production. And uh, right now we're brewing two beers. So we're brewing our light and our lager. Two traditional easy drinking beers, you know, nothing too complex, uh, but still drinkability is key. And um, we're just doing kegs right now. So that's our main production is kegs and growlers. So we do 50 liter kegs, 20s, and then growler production right now for you know local pickup and all that. Since we're in such a beach community, it's awesome. You know, you can walk up from the beach, grab a growler, you know, cruise around. It's awesome. So, a lot of fun. Very nice. And again, I'm just loving that they're copper clad because you don't see copper anymore. Yeah. It, it just—it's a beautiful look. It is. It's. Uh... It is kind of a bonus, you know, we, um, we actually wrapped a lot of the copper ourselves after we bought the, the original vats that were built in around 87, I believe. So we picked up a lot of these vats used and then we wrapped the copper after just to kind of give it that traditional look. Um, because we are in kind of a beach town, a lot of people come in and out and they want to see the, the, you know, the tourism kind of side of things and they want to check out this cool new building. We really wanted to make it look good and, and make sure people, you know, can uh, come and check it out. We do tours in here and stuff too, so it's kind of nice to to have a nice place for people to come and visit. Yeah, you know, it's so. very eye-catching from out. Just yeah, so it's going good. We have our, uh, we do all our production here. This is our kegging unit. So this is, uh, you know, on the craft brewery end of things, our kegging system. So we can, that allows us to keg simultaneously four minis or uh, large kegs at the same time. So, um, you know, a really efficient system that can, you know, rack them out pretty quick. Uh, and then for deliveries, you know, we're shipping right now to all bars and restaurants. Um, in the region of Chatham, Kent, southwestern Ontario, going into Lambton, Sarnia, um, and then touching towards London, but not into London, and then touching towards Windsor, but not into Windsor. So, that little middle market there of the Lake region, you know, Bayside Brewery, Sarnia is the Bayfront districts, you know, same with this area. So, it really works out that way nicely. Right, uh, do you use anything for a filter, or is it all unfiltered? 
No, uh, all our beers are, are fully filtered. Um, get everything out of a cartridge filter system. Um, get a nice clean product, you know, turns out well, so we're happy about that. And uh, our kettle's here, so we do our heat exchanges to get all, to cool it down before transfer. Um, our kettle is, uh, we do a six to eight hour boil, um, high heat boil, about 208. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and throw it into our fermenters. Um, and then from there into our conditioning and bright tanks. So, uh, you know, standard brewery process, but uh, we're happy about that. Currently, right now, we're using uh, malts for our brewing instead of actually a mash, um, which is going over really well. It is, you know, our mash or our malt that we get is, you know, straight out of uh, the hop uh, brewers union and comes straight to us. So it's a fresh product, but, you know, uh, until we can probably next year down the road, then we'll start doing our own mashes and all that sort of thing. So this building itself was built in the late 1800s um, as an Erio hotel. So um, Erio was established as a, as a coal mining facility. So all the coal that was shipped from Cleveland and the other side of the, uh, the other side of Lake Erie would get shipped into Erio. We had a full railway system that ran from Erio and all the way out into Ontario where we'd exchange all the coal. So um, the Alexander Leslie was a, a massive uh, freighter that would come in and the marina and the harbor itself was built for large boats just to start shipping coal, which is kind of nice. So when this building was built in the late 1800s, um, it's, it's always been kind of notoriously known for the alcohol and kind of the, the partying scene and people would come here from all over that to drink and, and you know, enjoy themselves. And then in the Prohibition era, um, a lot of booze smuggling was actually uh, kind of fortified out of this building. So there's actually tunnels in the basement. You can see where they would actually ship barrels in and out and stuff, which is kind of unique and it makes it kind of interesting. Um, through the 80s, this place was known as Tilton Hilton, um, and a lot of local people know the history about that. It's kind of it was a kind of a rough party bar, but everybody from you know Windsor to London knew this place as the place to be, kind of for the live music and all that stuff too. So. Um, the last few years, the building's kind of just sat. We did a lot of renovations. We put uh, over a, over a million dollars into the facility itself, and from there, we've kind of we're adding new patios, adding onto the building, uh, done a lot of renovations, and hopefully in the next few years, it'll be finally, you know, where it needs to be, and we're just going to keep adding on and, and hope for the best. Well, it looks great already. I mean, yeah. if you've seen it before, though, it was. Uh, I love that patio. Rough condition building. Uh, so there'll be, yeah, there'll be another patio that actually connects to this one wraps around the whole building in about two more weeks. So, so we we'll all waterfront, you know, we're a waterfront brewery, it's kind of fun. You know, we get that awesome atmosphere of, you know, Bayside, you know, just beach, a lot of fun, relaxed, uh, that sort of thing. So, and then summer's here, it's a total blast. Uh, the whole village is just a total party. You know, you can boat, you can drive around, walk down the boulevard, um, just a lot going on. So, yeah, quite happy about that. Women's Bayside shirts, John. <laughs> 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 you haven't seen the uh, Burnt Rock video yet, have you? Don't think so. Just don't watch it. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the brew pub. I'll take you guys back here and we right. can uh, take a little walk. This is actually the photo Colin was talking about, too. Is This is the building, uh, this is a photo from 1902 of the building itself. And, uh, wow. you know, it was a lot different. skinnier then, but. Uh, they expanded on the side over the years, and just additions were made, and uh, it, like I said, one of the oldest standing bu uh, buildings in the village, so, yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, come on back, we'll take a look at the brew pub, and this is where, you know, people can come in after tour, after day at the beach, after day, you know, drinking beer, come in and have a bite. These doors are fairly dangerous. wood-fired kitchen on this side. That's where we do a lot of our, uh, you know, hot wood-fired pizzas, uh, fresh bread, um, chicken wings, all that kind of stuff. We have a wood-fired kitchen and a full production kitchen as well. So, nice, small, cozy environment. We have a good selection of our, you know, craft beers plus other local craft beers on tap as well. Kind of keep it fun. So, quite a bit of a happening environment. And the whole thing is, you know, completely right waterfront. So, um, we're right on the water and, uh, We'll have a patio which is just finalizing construction right now where you know you'll be able to hang out right there so 
you know, good scene. Plan is to put a dock in so you can even boat right up to the brewery and, you know, <laughs> grab a pint to head out with or uh, all that sort of thing. So, or a growler. So, yeah. Really, like I said, beach themed. Everything's, you know, laid back atmosphere. Those are some of our other taps. I mean, every tap we make is all completely craft. So, though you get that same format on the cutaway of the Bayside Brewery logo, every tap handle itself in every one of our bars is its own driftwood piece. So, you know, they get it, they go in, they pick their own tap handle, and I think that's, they love that. You know, you walk in and they choose their own piece. So, it's super unique. You know, I we really like that. So, we're pretty happy about that. Well, we're still here at Bayside Brewing here in Erie, Ontario. I have Colin. Dallas is off on the hot sidelines hiding. Anyway, so you guys have been open since uh, last summer. Yeah. How has the beer industry changed even in that little time you guys have been open? You know, it, it is amazing. Um, craft beer in Ontario is growing like crazy, which I'm sure you see all the time. But uh, being from a small community like Chatham, Kent, and especially in a small village of Erio, which is population roughly 400, uh, in the summertime it, it grows quite a bit, but it is seasonal. But um, it is amazing, you know, we never anticipated growing the brewery this quickly. Um, originally we had five vats in here, um, producing about 20 kegs a week, um, and we didn't plan on growing for a couple years, and we had no other option because the demand was so high. Um, which is not a bad thing to have by any means. So we've already doubled our production. We're, we're producing way more beer than we thought we would already. Um, and being in a, in a community that is uh, kind of small and local, people really like to support that. So we're kind of lucky on that front too. The, the community itself has, has really backed us up and it's been nice to have that kind of tight connection too. So. so it hasn't been hard getting into any licensees in this area? Believe it or not, it hasn't been a huge problem. Um, we're, you know, we are a seasonal operation, so a lot of the local bars and restaurants as well will kind of, uh, you know, help us out. And because it is a local community, people are really keen to support that. Um, we also do a lot of arenas and curling clubs, special events and stuff like that, which is kind of nice because they're seasonal as well. Um, but we are in a lot of the local pubs and restaurants in Chatham, the city, and in the city of Sarnia as well, which is kind of nice to have us on tap with the other craft beers to kind of have our, you know, our, our stay in that kind of staple industry. So. Alrighty, so a very drinkable light. Yeah. I haven't tried the lager yet, sure. so I can't say anything about it, but what are the future plans? How long do you think till you would bring out something else? You know, that's hard to say. Um, right now, with demand being so high, um, we are going to stick with the light and the lager for another couple months. Um, the summer here is going to be crazy, so right now we're trying to get ready for that. We haven't really officially had a full operational summer out here in Erie um, We anticipate that our brewery itself will go through um, about, what did we say, about 65 kegs a month just in the facility alone here, which is a lot of our production. So right now um, we're going to make sure we, we get through the summer comfortably, and then once that's all finished up and wrapped up, then we're hopefully going to start uh, brewing a new ale. Um, like I said, I'm not the brewmaster, but uh, from what I've gathered, I think it's going to be our next experiment. The word on the, the street is red ale, yeah, is what so, I hear. So that's kind of the next plan, but hopefully it'll happen sooner than later. I mean, everything's been happening so much faster than anybody anticipated, so I think it'll probably happen, happen sooner than we think, too. So. Okay, so Ontario, currently 100 craft breweries. Not 100 physical buildings, but 100 craft breweries. Um, how many more do you think Ontario could support? From what you've I seen, think, I think a lot. You know, we are. Uh, you know, I think one of the, the hard things that I've kind of come to terms with in, in the learning process of all this is is sourcing um, a lot of the supplies and the ingredients and stuff you need. Um, but you know, Chatham Kent itself is a big agricultural community, so a lot of the farmers and stuff in the area have actually been coming to us and, and asking us if they think there's there's an industry in the hop game, um, and, and you know, in the malts and stuff like that, which I think there definitely is, and. Um, I think that industry will grow because of the craft beer industry because the big guys probably aren't going to go to the local suppliers where um, you know the small craft breweries like this could easily support uh, a hop industry and, and all that as well. So I think that will hopefully um, you know build that craft beer industry and with that more beers, the more beer available, the more craft beer available, the more people start to open their eyes and, and really get into the, the whole world of craft beer which I think is, is great for everyone involved and supporting local Keeping uh, keeping the beer in Ontario and in Canada is uh, is always an asset too. So, okay, here's a new one that we just started talking about. Sure. What do you think is needed for Ontario and even parts of Canada for the beers that are made here to get more respect worldwide? 
Because, I mean, I don't know if you've had, say, yeah, 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 um, yeah. Goose Island Bourbon County or Founders yeah. KBS or anything like that. Great stouts. Yeah. But you can find stouts just as good here in Ontario that don't get any hype whatsoever. For sure. Um, that's a good question. You know, it's uh, Canada. Canada's a tough market, right? I mean, um, with our with our big brother to the south, it's it's hard to kind of make a real staple in in the industry. But you know, I think the future is is looking good. Um, you know, craft beer in the United States compared to Canada. You know, you can find a craft brewery on every street corner, pretty much. I know, obviously, not to that extent, but um, you know, it's it's just a much bigger, bigger. It's a much larger industry. So. For Canada, I think it'll probably take a little bit of time, but I think in the near future you will see some of the some some great beers coming out of Canada that will be recognized. Um, but I think it will take some time. But you know, big and you know the large beer events, international beer competitions, and stuff like that. I've seen a lot more of, and I think that will only add to Canada's staple. So, what do you think has to change in the in the Ontario beer market to make craft beer as acceptable as in the U.S.? That's a good question. Um, I don't know if I have Some a definitive that answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, uh, licensing, you know, the LCBO and the beer store, it is kind of a monopoly. I mean, uh, I can't, I can't say anything bad about it because they do support some great things, and I know um, we're not in the LCBO yet, but um, you know they do a lot of great stuff for the craft beer industry. But it's also a little bit harder to make it as accessible to the consumer. Um, so I think that you know could open up some doors if things went a little bit more open. But I think with the more craft beer that exists and the more breweries that exist, um, the more people will take notice um, and the more people will get into craft beer, which will probably make it a little bit more um, well known and recognized in Ontario. So. Now, see something I found weird with the craft sure. beer industry between Canada and the U.S. You go to the U.S. You can buy a 24-pack of I don't know Bush for 8.99, <laughs> or a 2-4 a craft beer there for 40 bucks. Yeah. Where here it's a 2-4 a craft beer for 40, or the 2-4 of Canadian for 36, yeah. Yeah. and we still can't throw that extra four dollars in. What do you think has to change that way too? It, it is interesting, right? I mean. Uh, yeah, it, it makes sense. You know, I've been over to the to the stuff like in the states quite a few times, and it's like, yeah, you know, you can buy a box of beer for next to nothing. Where in Ontario, everything is is pretty competitively priced. Um, you know, at like craft beer, at the end of the day, costs probably a little bit more money than you know the bigger the bigger guys. But you know, our marketing budgets and stuff are just never going to be able to compete with the big conglomerates. So at the end of the day, um, I think it's just the consumer has to make the decision. As to you know, and I think that whole thing is changing in in the consumer side of things. Um, people are getting more into the local. I mean, even between me and my friends. I mean, um, now that I'm kind of more into the beer game, um, I've I've got all my friends into it too, and half of them won't, won't buy that stuff anymore. They're you know strictly craft beer all the time, and it and it's you know, and that every time somebody else does it, it just spreads to the next person, and and I think you know price wise. Um, it's easier said than done, but I think um, you know there's some pretty competitively priced craft beers out there now. Um, but it's still it's still you know it's it's a more expensive route to to drink. I mean, better quality I think is what you're paying for at the end of the day. So people don't mind now. I don't think spending you know 13 bucks on a six pack, 14 bucks on a six pack to get a quality product that they enjoy. You yeah, know, for sure. Especially for the craft beer, they don't mind pulling that out of their pocket compared to you know buying an expensive import or something like that is, you know, the craft beer, from what I've been seeing, you know, they'll spend the money on. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think has held this section of Ontario back? And by that, I mean, there's like three craft breweries, well, four. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, Chatham-Kent is, is a very agricultural-based town. We don't have a big city uh, epicenter where there's a lot of activity happening. I mean, uh, I think the, the city of Chatham Kent is 40,000 people roughly, yeah. which is a pretty small city. Um, and the basis of our economy in Chatham Kent is agriculture. So we don't have that thriving, uh, you know, city metropolis where you know there's there's a brewery on a street corner in, in this downtown core, and you know we don't really have that. So um, a lot of the time people would actually travel. You know, if you want to, you know, we're close enough to the United States. A lot of people do their shopping there, and you know they would. But now that local and people are more keen to stay local and, and uh, purchase local things, I think that will kind of add to it as well, but um, yeah, I don't know if you want to... I think the same thing, you know, Windsor, if you're, the Windsor has one micro craft brewer that just reopened about the same time as us last year, and 
maybe it's because they can run over to the States and about the same time as them getting to a liquor store in Ontario to go grab a cheaper case, maybe that might be it. Or the same thing with London, you know, it's such a Labatt dominated town, uh, that might have something to do with it. But the development in this region has been growing a lot quicker, but it has been a lot slower than the GTA in that region where it's so rich. Um, down here it's, like I said, a slow growth uh, and a slow learning curve towards the tradition of drinking, you know, the same uh, you know, draft at the local bar. And this, I think, is now just starting to change with the growth of more breweries. You know, one just opened up in London, now we just opened up, uh, Walkerville just reopened. So the wheels are starting to turn to um, a better craft beer direction, but it's a slow learning curve for sure uh, in this region, definitely. Alrighty, what would you like to foresee happen in the Ontario beer industry in the next few years? More craft beers. <laughs> the more beer the better, you know. Um, and I'm sure every other craft brewer and, and everybody else in the industry, they, uh, they all say the same. Um, everybody likes to help everybody, you know. We've, we've met so many great people working uh, in the beer industry now and especially in the craft beer industry that it's, it's just an incredible, um, you know, group of friends and, and everybody is here to help everybody. So as far as I'm concerned, the more beer the better because the more beer that's out there, the more eyes that are opened up and the more people get into the craft beer and, uh, and I think it's just, it's fun, you know. Like there's so many great beers out there and to have Southwestern Ontario, let alone all of Ontario, part of it, will just, will just help everybody's cause. So. I don't think there's much competition also between you know craft breweries in Ontario compared to a big name brand which are spending millions on fighting each other, and you know an OCB brewery is you know we'll link up for a local event and collaborate the whole thing, you know uh, I think it's craft beer versus everything else and it's very uh, inter internet that uh, you know to work together on a lot of projects and uh, and things like that and just collaborating on brews even like in Toronto they're doing such and all that sort of fun stuff I think yeah. it's just uh, a group effort you know to work towards. And I think that's how it should stay too, is you know, a good col uh, collaborative group effort you know, to work towards All it. Right. Thank you guys. Alrighty, we're still here at Bayside. We're going to do the get to know you questions. So we have three different facets of the brewing, well the brewery itself. We have the marketing, sales, we have one of the owners. So what's your favorite part of the industry and we'll start over here. Uh, the people, both the staff and the customers, uh, there couldn't be a more fun industry to work in. I think drawing a destination is just fun, you know, having people come out and, uh, you know, tours, education, showing them, you know, craft beer is awesome. Uh, drinking beer. Definitely. <laughs> Least favorite. <laughs> Least favorite. Um, you know what, uh, that's a tough question. Um, it's a little bit harder. Um, I guess the sales guy could probably help you that one, but I think um, being, being a small brewery is a little bit more of a challenge when you have to compete with the big guys, I guess. Yeah, getting asked for you know uh, marketing or you know doing events and collecting money is can be can be difficult and a challenge sometimes. But uh, you know keeping uh, keeping pace with everyone else, I guess, can be the least favorite. Is just keeping up with everything else that's going on in the industry it can be just an ongoing day to day job. Ready? Having to close the doors at night and send everybody home. All right, um, hophead or malt maniac? Malt. Hop. Hard hop head. He's hard. I like this side of the room better. Yeah, he's a big hop guy. Uh, well, we were also supposed to, because we've done a lot of Belgian breweries, we were going to add Yeast Beast to it too. I forgot to add Yeast Ooh. Beast. Uh, Definitely not Yeast. Sorry. <laughs> not a fan. I'll stick with the hops on that one. Yeah, stay hot. Um, how did you get into the industry? Um, kind of uh, being from Erio and uh, you know being in the community has been kind of a bonus, but uh, I've always loved beer. Um, my dad's always been a big beer connoisseur, so I kind of come from a beer family, and uh, I met the right people, and here I am, so. <laughs> yeah, I guess really liking beer and the same thing, you know, local village, uh, right time, right place sort of circumstance, and, uh, you know, being able to sell a great product is just uh, all the more so better. Uh, I'm from this area, Chatham, Kent, uh, moved back here a year and a half ago, and my husband and I were looking for something that we could do with our partners that would stimulate a little bit of econo economic development in the area. It's pretty hard hit by the recession in this area, so we're tossing around ideas of what would work, and a microbrewery in this area was non-existent, and we started putting a business plan together, and 12 months later, here we are. And it's looking great already. 
Thank you. I, I keep hearing I'm going to I'm going to have to come back in the summer, from what I hear. Uh, favorite style of beer? Traditional barley malt lager. Um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like a, an ale, uh, you know, a dark ale kind of thing is up my alley. Bit of a hoppy flavor to it, go down easy. I'm a big Imperial IPA guy, so bring on the hops, big time. Loves the IPA. <laughs> Least favorite? Uh, wheat beers, not a big fan. Yeah, white unfiltered wheat beers are pretty tough. Fruit beers. <laughs> and she made her cry. <laughs> Uh, weirdest ingredient you've ever brewed with? Uh, that was the only brewing question in here. Let's see if anyone can make anything up. Has anybody home brewed? <laughs> I have oh, um, a mistake. <laughs> um, weirdest thing? I've never really done anything crazy with with home brew. Um, I have tried to overhop my beer to the point where it was almost it didn't really work out so well. So that's about the end of the answer. The taste didn't uh, resemble what was uh, intended. I guess yeah. yeah. Alrighty, um, three beers, three beers for the rest of your life. One from here, one from another craft brewery, and one from one of the big guys. Guinness, our Long Pond Lager, and I'd go with a a red of some sort, maybe Murphy's red. Alrighty. Yeah, I think I could go with the Dead Elephant from uh, Railway City. Guinness, absolutely, and then uh, probably our light beer for the summer, got to keep cool. Yeah, I mean, um, our Long Pond Lager is uh, definitely one of my favorites. Um, as for a craft beer, um, Mad Tom from Muskoka Brewing Company is, is one of my favorite IPAs. It's, it's really clean, I love it. And um, from a big one, I'm going to say, uh, uh, what is it? <laughs> no, um, it's a good question. I had it in my head. Um, Upper Canada Lager is that is that is that's not a big brewery, is it? It's, yeah, it's you know. owned by Sleeman now and is brewed it? there. So Upper Canada yeah. is really good. So. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, and lastly, if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? Um, <laughs> working in concerts, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wakeboard a lot, so I, I still do actually, but yeah, that keeps me busy. So. Doing some other project development in some other industry but too busy doing something <laughs> well thank you guys bye cheers